imagine that we've got some very large number that has come from some calculation or something like that. Uh, 5, 2, 6, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then we've got a bunch of zeros. Uh, if you keep trying to write this down, it's very likely that you might accidentally lose a zero or write an extra zero or something like that. So there's a very nice method of writing large numbers, and also we'll see small numbers as well, using scientific notation. So this quantity would actually be, let's see, there'd be a, if we were going to write it with a comma, a comma, comma, so million, billion, 526 billion, uh, for example. Well, the way to write this in scientific notation is you write the first uh, significant digit on the left, followed by a decimal point, and then write down all of the other significant digits after the decimal point. So in this case, two, six, and then maybe we, we actually wanted this with four significant figures. We could write an extra zero here, and then we'd have four sig figs, or two extra zeros, and we'd have five sig figs. One benefit of scientific notation is then it's very, very easy to write as many significant figures as you want. To write this 526 billion with four sig figs or five sig figs to emphasize that those first or two uh, first zeros are actually significant, that's a little bit difficult. Some, some people use a notation where they put a line under the zeros or something like that. I'm not going to do that. I will emphasize that if you want to uh, write this with more than three significant figures, just write it in scientific notation. So we could put a zero or, or two or as many as we want. Let's just imagine this has three sig figs. We then, to make this the same size as this, obviously 5.26 is not as large as 526 billion, we multiply by 10 to a power that brings it back up to this original size. Now what size do we have to multiply? Well, we've essentially got a decimal point. We're not writing it because we don't want to make those zeros significant, but we, there's a decimal point implied over here. Now, to bring it over to this point, 5.26, or you can look at it this way. If we have a decimal point at 5.26, to bring it back to where it's supposed to be here, we'd have to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 places. So we multiply by 10 to the 11th power. The number here tells us how many places we would move that decimal point to get it back to where it's supposed to be. 11. So again, 5.26 times 10 to the 11, moving it 11 places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, there we go. Uh, how does that work? Why does that work? Well, just think about if you had 5 times 10, 10 is really 10 to the 1 power. So 5 times 10, that's 50. So that's like moving that decimal point one more place and adding another 0. If you were to take 5 times 10 to the 2, 10 squared, 10 times 10, that is 100. 5 times 100 is 500. So that's moving the decimal point two places. So that's the power of 10 just basically tells us the number of places to move that decimal point to the right if the power is positive. Okay. Now, what if we had a very, very small number? We, we're, in this course, we're going to be dealing with some very large numbers and also some very, very small numbers. So what if we have a small number? Then what do we do? Let's imagine we've got a number like this, say 0 0.0000000623 I put an extra zero here because I want to write this with four significant figures. Now, how do we write this number? Again, we start with the first significant digit on the left, which in this case would be six. So we write six followed by a decimal point, and then all of the other significant figures, in this case, two, three, zero, two, three, zero. So we can see that has got four significant figures. The power of 10 has no effect on the number of significant figures a quantity has. Just look at the numerical part, count up the sig figs, and that tells you how many sig figs there are. And if the number is in scientific notation, 
all you have to do is count up the digits. Whatever the number of digits are, it's, that's the number of significant figures. So that would be four. Now, if you have a number for some reason uh, written like 0 0.0023 times 10 to the 8, that might look like it's in scientific notation, but it's not. Because remember, you've got to have a non-zero digit to the left of the decimal point. So this is not in scientific notation. So you can't just count up all the digits. If it is in scientific notation, then all you have to do is count up the digits, and that tells you how many sig figs there are. Okay. Hopefully you won't run into that situation very often. Okay, back to the problem here. 6.230. Now we've got to move that decimal point back to the original place. Obviously 6.230 is not the same size as 0 0.00000 whatever, 6230. So what do we have to do now? Well, we have to move the decimal point, say 6.23, so it's here. We need to get it back to where it's supposed to be over here. So how many places do we need to move it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We need to move it nine places, but in this case, it's to the left. We need to make the number smaller. So we're going to multiply by 10 to the negative 9. The negative 9 tells us we need to move the decimal point to the left, making it smaller. So 0 0.000000 whatever, 6230, we will write then as 6.230 times 10 to the negative 9. Very, very good. Now, I want you to keep a very, very general rule of thumb in mind. And that is 5.2 times 10 to the 7th, 6.3 times 10 to the minus 5. Numbers with positive powers of 10, positive exponents, are large numbers, big numbers. Numbers with negative powers of 10, those are small numbers. So very, very simply, keep in mind, positive powers mean big numbers, negative powers mean small numbers. Whenever you do any kind of calculation, it's really important for you to try and keep in mind what your answer should look like. I want you to think about that. I want you to start doing that all the time. Anytime you do a calculation, try and have an idea of what your, your answer should be, at least approximately. Too many times I'll have had students who just put the numbers in the calculator and whatever the calculator said, that's the answer. Well, you've got to be careful. Sometimes uh, you might make a, a procedural error using uh, the wrong order of operations, or maybe your calculator uses a different order of operations than you think it does, or, or whatever, and you get some number that really is not correct. You put it in your calculator, just because you put it in your calculator doesn't mean it's giving you the right answer or what you really want. But if you can think about what your answer should be, and if that is particularly, very, if it's very, very different than what your calculator says, then you can catch a number of mistakes that way. So let's try and do that, and, uh, and I'll always try to emphasize that as we go along. Think about uh, what your answer should be. And then also, once you get your final answer, ask yourself, does this answer make sense? Does it seem like a reasonable result? Um, I've had students when, uh, back say from 11.11, when we do a problem, when you, you have something and you throw it, and then to calculate how far the object is. Well, I had uh, one student who gave a result that the distance the object traveled was 3 times 10 to the, uh, say, 3 times 10 to the negative 15 meters or something like that. What, okay, does that make sense? Well, that's what the calculator said, so I'll write the answer down. Well, 10 to the negative 15 meters, that is an incredibly small distance. That's on the order of the nucleus of an atom. That cannot be right. That student should have been able to see that result and say, oops, I made a mistake, uh, I did something wrong, let me go back and find out what, uh, what went wrong. A very, very simple mistake to catch if you just think about, does your answer make sense? So I'll really try to emphasize that. Let's always think about, do our results seem reasonable? Do they make sense? Okay, great. So, uh, scientific notation, how do we add, or how do we multiply and subtract numbers in scientific, how do we multiply and divide numbers to begin with in scientific notation? Well, 
Let's take a look at that. So let's imagine we've got a problem that looks like this. 6.32 times 10 to the 8th times 7.2 times 10 to the negative 5th. And we put it in our calculator and we, uh, we calculate it. Now, one thing let me, let me uh, mention. Uh, many, many of my students will put this into their calculator as, and they'll, they'll punch the buttons like this, 6.32 times 10. And then maybe there's uh, an X to the Y button or a little up arrow button or something like that to the 8th. Uh, sometimes that is fine. And sometimes that will work just fine. However, typically all calculators now, any kind of scientific calculator, and I really uh, emphasize that you will need a scientific calculator for this course. A scientific calculator is one that will do trigonometric functions like sine, cosine, tangent, inverse trig functions, exponential functions, um, but also basically will have a scientific uh, notation button. Now, sometimes that will look like a little button that says times 10 to the x. Sometimes it will look like EE, -E, like that. Sometimes it might look like EXP, something like that. Take a look at your own calculator and figure out what button uh, will, uh, you, will give you scientific notation. And use that rather than times 10 to the power of whatever. And I'll come back to that in a second. It's really important. Get used to using the appropriate scientific notation button because it is actually going to be easier for you. But I'll come back to that in, uh, in just a second. So, we multiply these out on the calculator. My calculator didn't give the answer in scientific notation, but that's okay. But let's say we get this value. How do we write this appropriately with the correct number of sig figs? Maybe in scientific notation if you want. Well, how many sig figs do we have here? One, two, three. The 10 to the 8th has nothing to do with the number of sig figs. 7.2, 1, 2. So how many sig figs do we keep? We've got 3 and 2. How, do, how many do we keep? Well, 2 is the smallest, so we keep 2. So we want to write this with two significant figures, which means 4, 5, up, but we notice that 5 will round our value up, so we will write this as 4, 6, and then 0, 0, 0. And then if we wanted, we could leave it like that, or we could write it in scientific notation. How would we do that? 4.6 times 10 to the, well, 4.6, we'd have to move it 1, 2, 3, 4 places. 4.6 times 10 to the 4th power. Now, does that seem like a reasonable result? Well, let's think about it. Let's look at our powers of 10. We've got 10 to the 8th, 10 to the negative 5th. When we multiply numbers, we add the exponents. So 10 to the 8th times 10 to the negative 5th is 10 to the 8 minus 5, which is 3, 10 to the 3. Well, we've got 10 to the 4 here. That's close. Well, why is it 10 to the 4 and not 10 to the 3? Well, let's think about it. We've got 6 point blah, 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 times 7 point blah, blah, blah. Well, what's 6 times 7? 6 times 7 is 42. So for a very approximate result, we would expect our value to be 42 times 10 to the 3. 42 times 10 to the 3, 42 times 10 to the 3, well, to write that in scientific notation, we would write that as 4.2, giving us an extra power of 10 times 10 to the 4. So we would expect our answer to be close to 4.2 times 10 to the 4. But what did we get? We got 4.6 times 10 to the 4, which is actually very, very close to our very approximate um, first order, so to speak, first order calculation. So do we think 4.6 times 10 to the 4th is the right answer? Yeah, we do. That sounds very, very good. So notice, <clears throat> we can get a very, very good uh, order of magnitude idea. In other words, roughly uh, how big our result is just by very quickly looking at our values. What do I mean by an order of magnitude? I mean really a very rough approximation. Just think about, say, uh, think about some, some question. Let's imagine you want to... You wanna, uh, 
determine how far away school is, your school, from where you are right now. Now, which would be a better result? And I have no idea how far away your school is from you, but which do you think is a, a better result? Two millimeters, two thousand meters, two kilometers, or five billion meters? Which do you think is, is closer? Well, two millimeters, unless you're standing right in your school, right next to your school, it's probably going to be farther than two millimeters. Two kilometers, well, that certainly seems like a reasonable res result if you're at home and your school is a little ways away. Uh, five billion kilometers, that's off the planet. That's, uh, you know, extremely, extremely far away. That's, you know, on another planet or, or something like that. So, uh, obviously, that doesn't seem right. So, very roughly, you know, you're your result should be probably on the order of a couple kilometers or a few kilometers or something like that. So, very approximate, uh, first order approximation. Now, what about division? What do we get for division? Well, let's divide these two numbers rather than multiply and see what happens. Okay, so here we've got 6.32 times 10 to the 8 divided by 7.2 times 10 to the negative 5th. What do we do? Well, do it out on your calculator, and my calculator said 8.77777777 times 10 to the 12th. <clears throat> now, how many sig figs do we keep? Well, we've got, again, 3 and 2, so we'll keep 2 sig figs. Again, the 7, we'll round that up, so we'll write this as 8.8 .8 times 10 to the 12th. Now, does that seem reasonable? Well, first, 10 to the 8 divided by 10 to the negative fifth. When you divide a number, you subtract the exponent. So we've got 8 minus negative 5. Minus negative 5 is plus 5. 8 plus 5 is 13. So we have 10 to the 13. Whoops, 10, sorry. 10 to the 13. But then we've got 6 divided by 7. Well, what's 6 divided by 7? Uh, 6 is smaller than 7, so we're going to get a number less than 1. Uh, so 6 divided by 7, we'll think of it as 60 divided by 7. 60 divided by 7, what's that? Well, it's 7 will go into 60 like 8 times or something like that. So 60 divided by 7, we'll write this as 0 0.8, 0 0.8 times uh, uh, 10 to the 13. So again, we see we get a number... Uh, less than 1. Well, 0.8 times 10 to the 13, we can move this decimal point over and make this 8, but if we increase this, we have to decrease this for the product to be the same. This is a very, very general rule of thumb, and I'll refer to this um, uh, numerous times. Let's imagine we have something like 3 times 4. Whoops, 3 times 4. Actually, this is something that I often ask my students when we're talking about uh, numbers. What is 3 times 4? Well, you might say 12, obviously. But in this course, 3 times 4 is 10. Why 10? Well, just in, in terms of the number of significant figures, how many sig figs does 3 have? 1. How many sig figs does 4 have? 1. So our answer can only have 1 sig fig. Well, what is 12 with only 1 sig fig? It's 10. So, you might think, well, that's ridiculous, that's stupid, but <clears throat> if we're talking about how accurately we know these values, it really does make sense. And I go through this in a little more detail in my 11.11 lecture on significant figures, so if you want to see that, just take a look there. Uh, but, let me, let me just say, just for the sake of argument, because I want to emphasize something else right now. 3 times 4 is 12. Now, uh, let's write... Let's write a different product. 2 times what gives us 12? Well, 2 times 6. So let's imagine if we decrease the 3 to 2, what do we have to do to the other number to keep the product the same? We have to increase it. So 2 is less than 3, but 6 is larger than 4. So if we decrease one number, we have to increase the other number in order for the product to be the same. Well, okay, that makes sense. Well, in this case, if we're going from 0.8 to 8, that's an increase of 1 power of 10. So we have to decrease this one by a power of 10 if the product is going to be the same. So this will be times 10 to the 
12. So what do we have? The bottom line is that our result should be around 8 times 10 to the 12, but look at that. It's exactly what we got. We got 8.8 .8 times 10 to the 12. So again, does this make sense? Yes. Uh, basically, if you just look at the powers of 10, that will at least give you an idea of whether you're in the right ballpark or not. 10 to the 8th divided by 10 to the negative 5th, in other words, 10 to the 8 minus negative 5, or 8 plus 5, 13, 10 to the 13. Well, 10 to the 13 is certainly close to 10 to the 12, so it looks like we're in the right ballpark. Very good. Now, back to what I was talking about of using that scientific notation button. One problem that I have seen my students uh, do over and over again is if they have a problem like this, they, and problems like this, uh, to write this accurately like this, you would have to put in these parentheses. But if you're doing some calculation, you might not think about uh, writing those in. So if you actually had some problem where you didn't put in those parentheses, if you were to just put this into your calculator as is, your calculator will not keep this 10 to the minus 5 in the denominator. You would get something like 6.32 times 10 to the 8 divided by 7.2, but then you're actually multiplying that value by 10 to the minus 5. That 10 to the minus 5 is not in the denominator where it's supposed to be. However, if you use that scientific notation button on your calculator, the times 10 to the power of, or EXP, or capital EE, -E, that groups, it's like putting parentheses around the, that number. It groups that power of 10 with the preliminary number and keeps it as a single quantity. And so your calculator understands that that number is then in scientific notation and it holds that power of 10 with the preliminary value so you do not need to put as many parentheses in your calculation. Uh, it's very, very important. Get used to using your scientific notation button because it's really going to be uh, very, very helpful, and it will keep you from making some of these kinds of order of operations mistakes when you're putting numbers into your calculator. Okay, great. So, uh, again, division, same uh, rule for multiplication, count up the number of significant figures. Now, we've got one more problem. What if you want to add or subtract numbers when the numbers are in scientific notation. We've got a little bit of a problem with that. We've got to take one more extra step before we, we uh, go through the, the uh, addition. Let's take a look at that.